How to use Task with Jenkins. At some point when authoring Jenkins pipelines, you have probably used the SH step or its cousins, BAT and PowerShell. However, there are times when you need to run multiple commands within those steps. That's usually when you start creating some sort of script, whether that's a shell script or a batch file. The reason you do that is to keep the amount of code inside of that step to a minimum. But even then, sometimes maintaining scripts can become complex. Another tool that you can use to create these scripts is Task. Task is a tool that is meant to be simpler and easier than other similar types of tools. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.332.2. And attached to this controller, I have a macOS based agent that already has Task installed on it. There's a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. Before we get started, let's go over and take a look at the task documentation. And you can find task at taskfile.dev. And we can see here that task is a task runner slash build tool that aims to be simpler and easier to use than, for example, GNU Make. So if you're used to using Make and it's been your favorite tool of all time, then task might not be the right tool for you. But if you're not ready to learn a tool like Make or maybe Maven or Gradle to do this task type run for you, then the simplicity and the ease of use of task is really quite amazing. Now let's go over and take a look at our sample repository. What you'll see when you come over and review this repository is that I have multiple branches within this repository. The main branch doesn't really have anything on it, but then we have a 00, a 01, a 02, and a 03. So we're going to work our way through each of these branches in order to see how task is used. So if we take a look at 00 start here, this is my normal starting point. If we take a look at the Jenkins file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the version of task, which is task dash dash version. And I'm also checking for FFmpeg. If you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you can see that I do a lot of work with video. And FFmpeg is one of the tools that I use a lot. So in this example that we're doing, we're going to be processing a video file using FFmpeg, but then I'm using task to actually drive FFmpeg. So let's go back over to our controller and let's take a look at the multi-branch project I already have set up. And we can see that I already have the four jobs here and they've already run once. So we're just going to review what was run. If we take a look at 00, zero start here and click into one, what we're going to see is currently the version of task that we're running is version 3.12.0 and the version of FFmpeg is 5.0.1. Now let's go back over to our repository and let's switch to 01 inline. And this may look fairly familiar to you as you've been authoring Jenkins pipelines. What I'm doing is I'm just running my ffmpeg command. Now, in reality, when I'm processing video files, I am doing a lot of different ffmpeg and other types of file processing. This is just one of the normal steps that I use. So what we can see here is I'm going to process a file, the dash i for the input, and I'm just processing a file for when we actually did a live stream for the Jenkins What's New on April 7th. And then I'm running a couple of other commands here. But one thing I want to call out is you'll notice that we're running the sh step, but within ffmpeg, I am using a filter. And this filter requires that I use double quotes and single quotes. And if you've worked with Jenkins pipelines for any amount of time, knowing that you have to escape quotes, whether that's a single quote or a double quote, can become quite challenging. And in fact, what you'll notice, if we go ahead and take a look at our 01 run, we can see that it failed. And if we take a look at the output from one, we can see that it's complaining about expected a step at because it didn't know how to handle just the regular quote and the single quote. If you take a look here, we can see that the SH started with a single quote, that's fine. But when we take a look here at our filter, we have our double quote here, our single quote here, we see the double quotes, but it doesn't know how to handle these opening and closing. So the whole step just failed. So what we want to do next is we want to be able to take this step and turn it into a shell script. Let's go back over to our repository and let's switch over to 02 shell script. Now I wanted to go ahead and include an example for a shell script so you can see the process of moving from inline to a shell script to using task. And what I'm doing is I have a file called process file and I'm just passing in the path to where the file exists on my machine. And if we take a look in the branch, we can see that process file is here and it's just running the exact same command that we saw in our inline, 
We're passing in a parameter dollar sign one, so that's the file coming in. But for here, we're not having to be as concerned with the double quotes and single quotes. So let's go ahead and go take a look at the output of this job in 02. And what we can see is that 02 shell script passed and worked out fine. And we can see that all the processing worked as expected. It's just processing the file for what I was needing that example, and then it was successful. So I know that I can take that shell script, run it manually, pass in the file name for the file that I want to process, and then it's done. And then I'm able to take that shell script and bring it into my repository. And then I was able to execute it from within Jenkins. But now, what does task give me? In my opinion, the structure of a task file actually simplifies the management of something like a shell script that can go completely wrong. How many times have you written a shell script or a batch file to where you have to do if constructs and deal with variables and try to do some sort of control flow and it just gets really all out of shape really fast. Task has the ability to be able to help us manage that in a little bit more sane manner. So let's go back over and let's switch over to our 03 task branch. And what you're going to see is we have a Jenkins file. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But then we have a task file. By default, task looks for a file named upper t task file dot yaml, yml, not yaml. So if we take a look at task file, this is fairly short and we can see that it's version three. There are numerous versions available for task. Version three at the time of recording is the most current version. And we can see here that we have a tasks block and it, yes, it is yaml. We defined what we want our task to be. In this case, we're gonna just name it build. It could be any number of things. And then we have this command block. And then we can pass in an array of the commands that we want to run. And in my case, I'm passing in ffmpeg i and input video file. We'll take a look at this in just a moment, but notice how this is referenced. We have two braces, a dot, input video file, and two closing braces. Then everything else is exactly the same as we've been running it before. Let's go take a look at our Jenkins file. What we'll see in the Jenkins file is that we have an environment variable set up. We have input video file, and right now I have it hard-coded to this string value. What I could have done, because of how environment variables are handled within Jenkins, is I could have turned this, instead of hard-coding it as an environment variable, I could have set it as a string parameter. And I could have typed in the path for this file into that field, submitted it, and then this process would have run. But for this example, I'm just using an environment variable. And then notice how we're calling task. Much like our shell script, where we did dot slash process dash file dot sh, here I'm just calling task build. And remember build was the name of the task that we defined within the task file dot yaml. So let's go back over and take a look at our last branch, which is 03 task. If we take a look at the output, we can see that task starts and then we processed, here's our ffmpeg-i, here's the value of that environment variable that turned into a parameter for my ffmpeg command. And then everything runs and completes successfully. We've only scratched the surface with what you can do with tasks. When you get a chance, Go take a look at task at taskfile.dev and see if it can be applied to any of your projects. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.